We are going to spend uh, the remaining half of today and all of Tuesday on waves. And um, I know I, uh, I'm afraid you won't really believe me when I say it, but uh, waves are the most important topic that I teach in this class. I don't mean this in the sense that on your final, there's going to be nothing but waves. I don't mean that. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of the, your grades, waves is a small topic of this class. But um, you know, of all the things I teach in this class, if I could pick out one thing that would uh, matter uh, when you that would matter when you are you know doing your career as a scientist or engineer, the one topic that will come up again and again is what we are going to call waves. So let me try to spend a little bit of time trying to introduce this topic because. Uh, the one of the reasons it's such an important topic is that you see it everywhere. You see it happen. Uh, you see the mathematics that we are going to describe now being applied to many different circumstances. Some that you cannot even imagine right now. So um, I want to introduce wave as a general concept. I'll be using some physical demos uh, so that you know it's not entirely abstract. But I want to keep our um, discussion as general as possible. So uh, so. What is a wave? Like, what would you call a wave? I mean, how many here have heard the phrase wave before? Like, it's an existing English word, right? It has some meaning that you associate with it. So let's say, uh, what are some examples of waves that you know? Sound wave, OK. Can you visualize sound wave? Not really, OK. So it's not a very good example. Although you have a uh, lab t next week, Tuesday, that will actually deal with the sound waves. But so sound wave, it's an example of wave, but it's not a good one that you can visualize. Any other, like when someone says the word wave, what do you imagine? What do you visualize? Microwave. microwave. Can you visualize microwave? <laughs> exact same problem. OK. <laughs> Maggie, what were you saying? Electrical, Electrical wave? I, electromagnetic waves? Yeah, so that's a, a ma microwave is an example of electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic wave has the same problem that you cannot easily visualize it. Water waves is one. Like you see waves on water, there it is. Uh, I actually have a water wave demo that I'll bring out for class of Tuesday. Um, it's for something else. Uh, any other waves? How about something that's not quite physical? Like all the examples that you have given me are actual physical waves. Sound wave is one, electromagnetic wave is another, water wave is another physical wave. Yes? Sine wave, um, I guess, do people do say that. Um, so I guess, uh, I don't know what this will give me if I say sine wave. So, um, well, <laughs> such a tiny thing. All right, uh, let me just do a plot. So, I mean, yeah, people do say sine wave, and that's because when you plot sine over x, it looks uh, wavy, and that's the shape you associate with the waves. All right, so that's a more of a mathematical wave, um, right? It's uh, something that you can plot that looks like what you associate with a wave. Um, I'm looking for, I guess, uh, something that's non-mathematical, um, where your intuition, huh? Earthquake. earthquake wave, that's an example wave, uh, but I think that's another example of physical wave. So what earthquake wave is, is you know, if I, if one part of something shakes, like by this, then if you you know put some uh, very precise measurement here, you will see this portion of the table shaking as well. That's what earthquake wave is. All right. Uh, I'm so all the examples that you have given me are examples of waves in science and math. I want you to think about in your daily life when you are not doing any kind of math at all, no kind of science, if you've ever seen uh, someone refer to a wave. Uh, waving, yeah, okay, that's a kind of wave. <laughs> All right, any other waves? Wind, wind. Oh, you mean when the tree branches wave like I'm waving due to wind? Yeah, you know those. By the these two particular examples, they are not actually what we are going to refer to as wave. So, okay, I'll give you the two examples that I like best. Um, one is the waves in a stadium. If you are watching sports events in a stadium, have you seen people do waves? Right? People do this, right? 
and you know you see person on your left going like this, you rise up and do the same thing, and the person on your right does that. That's actually an example of wave. In fact, in the sense that we are going to describe wave. It's not physical in the sense that there's no law of physics that tells you how the wave moves across the stadium. But it's an example of wave. You can use a similar mathematical description as what we are using, except you probably have to bring in psychology and human anatomy somehow. Um, another example of wave, and this is the one that I like the best, and I want you to, I don't know, uh, look it up on your own, is something called a traffic wave. It's, um, let's see. Uh, there's a good Wikipedia article. It's a way of uh, describing motion in traffic, motion of cars in traffic, in a way that's very similar to, let's say, describing sound waves. So I don't know if there's a, there's no image here. Um, possibly. No, traffic wave. Um, Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, so I guess th this is the idea behind the traffic wave. Um, so you know, if you drive, you might have seen this, where um, you are driving along the freeway and the car comes to really slow down, so you have to come to almost complete stop, and then you know they start moving again, so you move again, and you wonder, okay, what was causing me to slow down and stop? And as you drive, you never see anything that actually caused it, right? So traffic wave is something that can explain an experience like that, where, so imagine a bunch of cars, as they are moving, one car slows down for no reason. Maybe, they, for no real reason. Um, so when this car slows down, then this distance, distance gets shorter, so this car has to slow down also. And by the time this car slows down, this car speeds up again and moves off, but the car behind this car also has to slow down also because the distance is decreasing, and then this goes on, and the car behind it has to slow down, car behind it has to slow down. So this um, sort of a narrow gate that happened once, it sort of moves backward in traffic from interaction be between uh, cars. And so that's a, one more thing that you can describe as a uh, wave. Oh, in fact, I have a demo that can be kind of used to illustrate something like this. Ima this is a slinky. Imagine the rings of this slinky are uh, like the cars. Then what you have is you have something that causes a compression here. And that compression travels along the slinky. Okay. So you know, for this class, we are obviously going to uh, focus more on the physical waves. But I want you to get used to thinking of waves as a, a general term for describing any phenomenon that looks uh, like what we are describing. So let me give you a, a model of wave that we are going to use uh, throughout this class. Well, throughout the remainder of this class dealing with the waves, which is today and next week. So um, the easiest model of wave is wave on a string. So that's what we are going to use, use the most. So imagine something that's stretched over a space. So something stretched over a space. And what we call wave is what you see. Um, when I move one end, so when I shake one end up and down, um, you see something moving across. Uh, let me, when I, you see something moving across, right? Yeah, so that's uh, what we are calling wave. So when you look at a wave, um, what does it involve? Would you say it involves motion? Okay, would you say it involves a motion a movement? Um, in this case, horizontal movement. Yeah, this is one where you have to be careful. I see Stephen shaking no, it's because, so, um, so I mean, it, when you look at it just uh, simply, it does look like something is moving across, right? Like, you know, I shake this end, and at some point later, at some time later, that other end shakes. So there's some quantity that's moving across, but if you ask the question, is it a spring that's moving across? The answer is no. I can actually mark a section of the spring and see how it moves. So let me just, uh, uh, I don't want to affect too many things. Uh, let me just uh, look at this blue tape marked section 
if you can see it, and then it kind of blends in. Um, so when I shake one end, oops, yeah, you can't really see it, right? Yeah, this is why I'm gonna do the simulation. So you see me shake, so you can have a image of the physical thing that's in the wave. But um, let me do the rest of the discussion in the simulation. It's uh, one easier for you to see. It's easier for me to speak and control the simulation at the si excuse me same time. So uh, since it's a simulation, let me use this end that actually makes things easier. So what you see as a wave uh, is what you saw. Uh, this is kind of simulation of what you saw before. I move this end, and that movement sort of propagates through. Uh, in fact, let me change it to this. It's a little bit easier that way. I press a button, there's a pulse that goes through. Yeah. Now, it does, uh, it does look like here, something is moving across from left to right, right? But if you ask the question, are any of these beads moving from left to right? The answer is no. So let me start, uh, let me do slow motion. Uh, start up, pause, pause. Look at this green bead. See how it moves. As this wave moves across, this green bead, it moves upward and then down, and never once it moves left to right. So this is one um, interesting feature of wave that when you see a wave propagation, by the propagation is the word we use with wave motion because we do want to separate this kind of motion from all the other motion that we have been describing, where physical object actually moves from one position to another. I mean, so there is a motion here. There's actual motion of mass here, but that motion is up and down. The wave propagation is from left to right. So, um, so something is moving across. What would you say is moving across in this motion? Oops. Let me just keep to a simulation. So uh, as I do the simulation, you'll have to imagine me uh, striking the string. So uh, I mean, so something is here moving across this string. So we want to identify some physical quantity that we can say, well, OK, so no, there might not be any mass. There not, might not be any mass that's moving across. But we want to say this, this physical quantity is moving across in the form of wave. Yeah, energy, yeah. So, I mean, you see it here. So right now, this is the whole system with a zero energy, or at the lowest energy. Uh, this pulse, what it does is it puts in a little bit of kinetic energy on this side. Actually, kinetic plus potential. But so right now, as the way things are set up, you have a lot of energy here and no energy here. And at some later point in time, that it moves across so that now it's this end that has more energy. These beads are moving up and down, so there's kinetic energy. And when it's stretching the string, there's a potential energy there. So this end has a lot of energy. Energy that started out here has moved across to that end. Yeah. In fact, um, this simulation has a little bit of damping built in. That's why you see the pulse getting smaller. If you get rid of damping, so no friction, then this energy moves across uh, without changing. Good. So that's a wave. That's a, what we describe as a wave. It's a, um, let me give you two different descriptions. Um, so what we just described now is, I guess, so uh, what is wave? Um, we could describe it as, um, I guess, well, I guess it's um, better to say this is what happens in a wave. What happens in a wave is that um, um, energy uh, moves across the space without movement of mass. But I'm hesitant to call this a uh, definition. Because when I call something definition, it, um, I feel like it, there should not be any counterexamples. And I think I put in this, I 
put in this without movement of mass um, to try to rule out some counterexamples. Because you know, you could say, if I simply say energy is movement of energy across the space, if I throw this mass across the space, like that doesn't look like a wave, but that would fit this definition. So I say, without movement of mass, then that gets a little bit closer. But I just want to say this is a more of an intuitive description. And one other intuitive description that you will hear from time to time is that wave, that wave is oscillation. That's actually why we did oscillation before. Oscillation in space and time. So you have seen oscillation in time, right? So oscillation in time is this. Uh, well, oscillation in time is this. I take this mass on a spring. Uh, I put this mass on a spring. Over time, it oscillates up and down. So one way you could actually describe wave is, you know, imagine this is oscillating up and down. But as it's oscillating up and down, somebody uh, moves it across at a constant speed. Then the position of this will track like that sine wave. So, um, and you know, this has some validity, but once again, I don't want to use, really use that as definition because, in fact, um, the description of wave is more general than oscillation. Oscillation covers a very particular type of wave that we'll talk about. So let me just put quotation marks around this. <laughs> 